Good morning. We invite you to join in singing our prelude. That's the song we sing before Mass to help us prepare for Mass. Found on the board, 742. Blessed and beloved, 742. To those of you who are here in church and to those who are watching online, good morning. Whatever you do, your heart is in your hands. If your heart is not pure, neither is your sacrifice of anything that you do. It is the whole approach to the law as described in today's gospel. It is significant that Christ tells us to reconcile with your brother before you offer your sacrifice to the altar. As he said, he was not here to abolish the law. He does not care only what is in your heart. He cares what you do with what is in your heart. It matters what you do and also why you do. Today is Together in Mission Commission Sunday. Envelopes are in diffuse and will be filled out later and collected. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. 
Thank you. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Isaiah Mary and preaches Father Francis. <laughs> Let us begin our Mass by singing together number three on the yellow card, I am the light of the world. Number three on the yellow card. and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear friends, as we come to celebrate these beautiful mysteries of our faith, let us quiet our hearts and minds, repent of our sins, so as to prepare for these beautiful mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. 
let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace so as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before men are life and death, good and evil, whichever he chooses shall be given to him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep His feet, with all their hearts they seek Him. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they. have laid down your precept to be careful, be carefully kept. May your ways be firm in keeping your statutes, firm in keeping your statutes. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they Teach me the way of your statutes, and I will give them to the land. Grant me that I may keep your law and observe it wholeheartedly. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to, to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor a ruler of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of the age knew, for if they know, had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, what eye has not seen, an ear has not heard, and what is not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who are love him. This God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the death of God. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not, make, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. Dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> well, good morning, football fans. <laughs> These past few weeks, we've been reading from the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount is a whole program that Jesus lays out it's a new path to God. It is not to abolish the law. Jesus continually 
insists, I did not come to abolish the law. Rather, I came to fulfill the law. So the program that he uh, makes for us in these three chapters of the uh, gospel according to St. Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, um, he heightens the holiness that is expected of us unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus makes a very, very demanding claim on us. But the, so how do we look at this? <clears throat> These teachings of Jesus are meant to purify our hearts of bad instincts and to seek the love of God above all else. It teaches us that true happiness is not found in riches or well-being, in human fame, power, or, or any, such, any human achievement, but in God alone we find the source of every good and of all love. The Sermon on the Mount and the teachings of Jesus They describe for us the paths that lead us to the kingdom of heaven. And we do so according to church teaching sustained by the Holy Spirit. It is only a life in the Holy Spirit that we are able to tread upon this path that Jesus gives to us step by step by everyday actions, work by the working of the word of Christ, we slowly bear fruit in the church to the glory of God. Well, this talks, this readings this morning talk about freedom and free will. Freedom on one side and grace on the other. The grace of Christ is not in the slightest way a rival of our freedom when this freedom accords with the sense of the true and good that God has put in our human hearts. On the contrary, the Christian experience attests that in prayer, the the more docile we are to the promptings of grace, the more we grow in inner freedom and confidence, the more we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit, the more we grow in freedom. So let us look at these teachings from the readings today. We heard from the first reading, it comes from the book, it's called the Book of Sirach. And the book of Sirach is, a, is a, uh, about 200 B.C. or sooner um, year, uh, book. Um, probably it's Greek literature and therefore not included in uh, the Hebrew gospel, uh, the, excuse me, the Hebrew writings, but it's part of the tradition of the church from the earliest days uh, and, until, and still now. Uh, again, the, the book called the Book of Sirach. And Sirach talks about human choice, the, the freedom that we've been given. And this is a uh, very important reading to hear this again. If you choose, the writer says, if you choose, you can keep the commandments and they will save you. If you trust in God, you too will live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch out your hand. Before you are life and death, good and evil. We sang in the responsorial psalm, blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Our Catholic Faith teaches that each human being, each of us, fulfills our vocation by this 
life in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. And God has created us in a, as a unique being. We have received a soul, and our soul has two faculties that are very important, the faculty of intelligence and of free will. These are rooted in our soul. And th- this is why we are said to be created in the image and the likeness of God, because of our intelligence and because of our freedom. God created us not because he had to. Um, he created us because he wanted to share his love. He, com- he, he wanted to share his love with those who would choose him, specially created beings to share his love free, freely. So we have a spiritual soul, and we are created this way. God has ordered us to himself, but he has not programmed us like robots. We are given free will. Therefore, our choice is important. And now let's look at the gospel, what the gospel has told us. Because if we are to find our fulfillment in, um, in, in being ordered by God's love toward him, not programmed so that we are just our forced you know, auto, auto, you know, machines. We are human, and we are given this free choice to respond to his love. And there we will find eternal beatitude. So Jesus heightens the law. He says... Unless your righteousness surpasses the scribes of the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And he continues, you have heard it said, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. Now listen to what Jesus says, but I say to you, but I I say to you, what? Are you going to change the law? I have come to fulfill the law. Whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Well, that's impossible, Lord. You know, I hate my brother. My brother hates me. That's what brothers are for, for hating each other. Come on. And, um, and, uh, but he says, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment meaning hell, that is, it is a capital offense. Jesus does not want just superficial getting along grudging. He wants hearts that are made for peace. He wants hearts that turn from violence and turn to peace. But Lord, I have sinned. I have failed. Jesus says, come to me. You who are weary, and I will give you rest. Jesus continues, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust, looks at someone with lust, has already committed adultery. But Lord, that is so hard, because our hearts are so restless, seeking for pleasure after pleasure. But Jesus says, you have already committed adultery. The Lord does not want passionless followers. He wants those who have hearts that are pure and faithful. But Lord, we have failed. We have sinned. Jesus says, and I will make, come to me, you who are humble and repentant, and I will make waters or springs of living water flow from within you. Again and again, again you have heard it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, don't swear at all. Let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. You know, do not Promise what you can't fulfill. Make each day your day that you renew your covenant. Because I have come not to condemn. I have come to give you life. 
the Son of Man was not sent to judge the world, not to condemn it, but that you may find life in the Son of God. And I will forgive you and give you rest. The heightened call to holiness is beyond what we can achieve on our own. So God blesses us with the spirit, which is the spirit of mercy, the spirit of love, that we would bend our, our pride in humility and in repentance and come to him. Even during the Mass, before we come up to communion, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Constantly in the prayers that the priest prays, it refers to God's never-ending love. There's always a way for us to repent and to uh, bow down in humility and gratitude. But it, uh, and so this is the way that we follow the Lord. It is the way our soul is freed, and it is the way that we are fed. Our freedom is limited and fallible. We freely sinned by refusing God's plan of love, and still he calls us and we renew that covenant. And finally, what the more that one does that is good, the freer one becomes. There is no true freedom except in the service of what is good and just. The choice to disobey and do evil is an abuse of freedom and leads us to the slavery of sin. But we come to the Lord of mercies, who constantly builds us up again, that all our actions may bring life to the world and to bring light. Hi, everybody. Now, before Mass, you heard a plea to all of us, please silence your phones, right? All right, get your phones out. Take this opportunity, because it's not very often, in fact, I may not do this again to ask you to turn on your phones. So, here we go. There we are. Now, find your QR code reader and pick this envelope out of the pew. <laughs> I decided I have to find a new way to ask for money. <laughs> And inside here, you're going to find a QR code. I have to warn you, it's really small. It's, it's right here. It's a real small QR code. However, it will work. So, see if you can open that up. Let's see what happens with mine. Ah, there it is. There it is. You got it? Yes, I see. I see a bunch of them. Yeah. Now, this is going to be able to take you to a website for St. Dominic's Church and then give you the opportunity to make a donation to Together in Mission online. Now, if you would like to use this envelope, then I'm going to show you how to do that. And looking at this envelope, do you see the theme for Together in Mission this year? The theme, shine his light. And Father Francis just finished telling us to be the light to be the light of the world. And that's what Jesus told us last Sunday on the Mount. He said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. And we are 
disciples. He's telling that to us also. You are the light of the world. And we are called to shine his light, to shine the light of Christ. And in Together in Mission is to shine the light of Christ on those in need. And if you have received an envelope in the mail or been contacted by the archdiocese, that means you've given to Together in Mission before. And so they've already contacted you. I got one of these in the mail already. And that's after being away for seven years. <laughs> you stay in their database. You stay there. <laughs> Yeah, so I got one of these also, and I got one a few weeks ago. So if you got one of these already, don't fill out another one, because next year we're going to send you two. But if you can give today, this, this is the launching of the campaign for Together in Mission throughout the entire archdiocese, and all pastors are doing this. Probably not as cleverly as I am, but... So if you'd like to use this, the top of the envelope is where you put your information. You can do that now because you can put this in the collection basket at the regular um, collection time, and you could finish it today. So you just put your contact information there, your name, address, email printed carefully, and phone number. And in the box over here, it gives you some suggested donations, and the information that I got from the diocese was that if everybody could kind of give an average of $300, $30 a month over 10 months, then that would be a big help to the whole archdiocese. So the archdiocese is helping those in need, and to help those in need, the archdiocese is performing works of corporal mercy. Now, what does corporal mean? It means physical. So if we're meeting the needs of people who need shelter, who need clothing, who need food, then we are fulfilling their physical needs, and that's corporal works of mercy. Now, we're all called to do that because if we are the light of Christ... We have to do something to show the light of Christ. And we have to do good works. And we can do these works of corporal mercy. Then, if we don't all have the time to go to the Catholic charities in the Archdiocese or to St. Vincent de Paul or to other agencies... <coughs> If we're not able to share time, we can share our resources, our treasure. And then those people working in those ministries for the archdiocese can actually do those works of corporal mercy in our name, on our behalf, because we are helping them to do those works. So this Donation will help the archdiocese to work with the poor and work with poor parishes and poor schools to help them stay open. And they'll be reaching out to tens of thousands of Catholic students in our schools to give them that quality education that we are able to provide for our students here at St. Dominic's but not all parishes have the financial resources to keep their schools open. And I hate to think of any Catholic school closing because of lack of funds and denying students that fantastic opportunity for education. So let's help the Archdiocese here at St. Dominic's when we have the resources to help those in need and to perform those corporal acts of mercy on our behalf so that they will be the light of the world, the light of Christ to those who serve, and we are being the light of Christ because we are helping those people 
to do those works on our behalf. If you've already given your donation online, now turn off your phones. <laughs> and thank you very much for your consideration. And these envelopes can be dropped off in the um, basket today at the regular collection. Or if you're going to go online, because with, without the phone, you can get to the same webs website on your phone or on your computer that's printed in orange on this envelope here and then be able to drop it off at, uh, at Mass the next time you come or put it in the office at any time. Thank you for your consideration for helping those who are in need and helping others and us to perform those good deeds, those acts of corporal mercy. I believe in one God, Father Almighty. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, true with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Holy Spirit, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life, the world to come. Amen. The Lord God knows the desires of our hearts, and we offer our prayers to the Lord this day. For all of those shepherds the church, heading God's will and seeking the power to carry it out, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all those tribes to observe and teach the decrees of the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all who strive to be faithful servants, sharing the good news of the Lord, gospel, let us pray to the Lord. For the people in Turkey and Syria who were affected by a strong earthquake, may they find the help they so desperately need and have the resources to rebuild their dwellings and their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For all in our faith community, especially those unable to join us today, let us pray to the Lord. For the, for, the repose, for the wedding anniversary of Julian and Emily Garma, and who remember in a special way of this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the intentions written in our book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. For these intentions and all the intentions deep within our hearts, we pr 
As for the intercession of the good mother of God, as we pray, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the of our death. Amen. that this your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, be pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, Alex's assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold, Timmy takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Joining our brothers and sisters who are joining us online, we pray together our act of spiritual communion as we say, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these seven delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the announcements. So first of all, a reminder about the men's retreat at Mater Dolorosa Retreat Center in Sierra, uh, Sierra Madre, just 15 minutes away from here. And you can find information on page 3 in the bulletin. It starts March 10th, so uh, you really need to think about breaking away from the world for a short time and focusing on Jesus and men's spirituality, and it's especially good during the Lenten season to do that. So uh, really think about it, and you can register online, and you can talk to John Van Dyke for more information, who happens to be right over here, appropriately under the... Lady of Guadalupe. <laughs> so, John, hang out a little bit, and people can find you. Journey into Truth, this will begin Tuesday, February 21st. Check the bulletin for details. And help is needed with cleaning the church. We're going to have a church cleaning day, and if you're tired of cleaning up your house, <laughs> clean this house. <laughs> do something new and different. And if you'd like to do that, there's going to be a large group people helping out so leave your name and phone number in the office after mass St. Dominic's Health Ministry is in partnership with the Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing and is going to be offering a free line dancing with the acronym LINDA L-I-N small e D-A small N-C-I-N-G it's a health promotion program, and it's a study that they're going to do. And they're looking for Filipino Americans. Are there any here? <laughs> but with high blood pressure. Yeah, me. And on the back page are other specifics that they're looking for for Filipino Americans to join in this program and there is going to be line dancing and uh, the sessions are going to be February 20th and 25th so it's kind of coming up quickly so check this out if you're interested and we have a real treat next weekend Father Roberto is coming back to preach all weekend yeah so we can all find out how his ministry is doing in Mexicali, Mexico. So take one of these home. There's lots more information in it and details about what I just announced. Thank you. I'm just laughing because trying to find a couple Filipino Americans who blind dance with high blood. I think we can find a couple. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Please rise now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you always in the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Amen.